platforms in parallel. It will be our first experience uh, like that and hope it works properly. So give me 30 seconds, please, to ensure that everything went well. Platforms in parallel. Yeah, we are live. Perfect. I think I see quite a number of people already are uh, we're waiting for this in youtube and um, we can start so welcome everyone thanks a lot for joining today for our vc shark tank dedicated to clean tech agri tech and energy tech startups uh, we have a set of great investors and great projects and um, i want to start as usually with uh, introductions by investors. And uh, um, I would kindly ask you, each of you, to give a few um, minutes introduction of your investment fund and, of course, your investment thesis and criteria so that everyone understands what exactly investment opportunities you are looking for. And I want uh, to start with uh, Xavier Alcala, a startup scouting manager at Vira Telefonica from Spain. Xavier? Yeah, hello. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Nice to be here. So thank you for inviting me to this session. Um, about Waira, Waira is one of the open innovation initiatives of Telefonica. We were born as, as an accelerator, but currently we are a corporate venture capital. Uh, we are not only looking uh, for an economic return in the participated startups, but we are looking for them uh, to do joint business with Telefonica and we help them as a strategic partner. Um, the synergies uh, could be with the different departments of Telefonica for internal use or with some of our clients. Um, and we normally invest in pre-Series A and Series A. Um, with a maximum valuation up to 20 million, approximately, and tickets up to 250 key. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Xavier. I know that a lot of startups wanted to reach out to Telefonica for both investments and corporate pilots. So that is their chance, definitely. You're welcome. Uh, okay, and I want uh, to give the word to another investor, Pablo Perea from GoHub Ventures, also from Spain, by the way. Hi, Pablo. Hi, hello. Thanks for the invite. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thanks uh, so, for so GoHub is the corporate VC of one of the largest water utility companies in the world. And in the last two and a half years, almost three years, we already have around 24 companies in our portfolio. They are focused in what we call deep tech. So all of the technologies that fall into this broad concept uh, that are mainly um, you know, disruptive technologies. And in terms of the profile of the business, we're not only looking for uh, water technology startups. We're also looking to a wide array of, of verticals. And um, in terms of tickets, we invest, we have our accelerator program and we have the venture side of the business where we invest between 500K and 3 million. Amazing, Pablo, thank you very much. And if I remember correctly, GoHub also is very deeply connected with the industrial sector, yeah? So you include acceleration in addition to the- uh... So we have the accelerator and we have the venture side of the business. And so since we're backed by a corporate, we're also smart money uh, in the sense that in any way we can, we develop pilot programs with the corporate and, and that's a win-win situation for, for both GoHub, Global Omnium and obviously the startup. Okay, okay, great. Thank you, Pablo. And I want okay. uh, to jump from Spain to another part of the world, uh, India, and give a word to Mangalam Singhal, investment analyst from World 5 VC. Mangalam? Yeah, hi Nelly, hi everyone. Hello, can you please briefly remind us about your investment thesis and fund? Yeah, so, you know, we especially look for uh, ventures which are either into B2B or B2B2C space. And, uh, you know, looking out for ventures who use deep technologies like AI, ML, blockchain in their core product or the service offerings. And we predominantly do pre series A rounds. And clean tech is something that, you know, we are really looking forward to investing. That's why I thought I'll join today. 
Oh, that's cool, Mangalam. Thanks a lot for joining. I know that you felt not good, so it's a, a special um, honor uh, that you did it. And uh, I also remember that you are super active in uh, the venture investments these days. Yeah. Uh, so cross my, uh, my fingers that uh, the deals will come up soon. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Nadi. And I want to give a word to the investor from Switzerland, Luca Zerbini, partner at Peakpoint Partners. Luca, hello. Hi. Well, thank you for uh, for having me again. I am uh, looking forward to the discussion. Uh, so we are a 120 million fund focused on uh, early growth, so Series A and Series uh, B uh, across uh, Europe and uh, uh, in sustainable technology. So for us. Of course, the return on investment is very important and as important is uh, the focus on uh, addressing some of the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. So look forward to the discussion. That's cool, Luca. Thank you. And you have a beautiful background. <laughs> the Alps, of course. <laughs> So, um, and uh, last but not least, I want to give a word to Halil Efendiev, uh, who is not typical VC, but innovation manager and at Tesla Group. Halil, can you please uh, describe your uh, focus? Yeah, hello. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to participate. Yeah, you're correct. We are not traditional investor. I'm responsible for open innovation field. Uh, in our company, basically, yeah, we, we have many challenges and uh, many of them are in the field of sustainability and circular economy, uh, especially with CO2 emission and different kinds of waste that uh, we have because of our production. And uh, as I said, many challenges and uh, for sure we, we want to lead this change and uh, uh, basically, my, my goal is to, to find the companies that can, companies, partners, people can, that can help us in this journey. Amazing. So you are looking for the startups to make corporate partnerships or, or um, uh, pilots with, yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Guys, uh, get prepared. You see how many opportunities you have today in addition to traditional VC fundraising. Thank you very much, Khalil, and uh, thanks to all investors. For startup founders, please get prepared. You know that there is an order um, and uh, you received it by email and uh, you can share your uh, screen definitely and uh, share your pitch deck. You have five minutes. I remind you, each of you has five minutes pitch and then unlimited Q&A with investors. And immediately after the session, we will collect feedback from investors and make direct introductions to facilitate your negotiation for the future deal. I want to give a word for amazing founder from Canada and the startup is from Latvia, Europe, Fixar, and uh, Yulia Druznikova, Director of Global Expansion at Fixar. Yulia, are you ready? Uh, I'm afraid yeah. you did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it works. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you, everyone. So my name is Yule. I'm Global Expansion Director at Fixer. Fixer actually stands for Fixed Angle Rotors, our core technology we use in our technologies, in our products. And I'm speaking about autonomous unmanned aerial solutions for the industrial missions. And this is our flagship model, Fixer 007. It's not a secret agent 007. It's just the seven kilograms is the takeoff weight of our solution. Actually, what type of problem do, uh, do, do we solve? Currently on the commercial market, uh, the drone operators fa face the problem. They have to choose between the models that are quite easy to use, but they cover on the short distance, like 15, 20 minutes. And those models like fixed wings, that cover longer distance, but they are quite difficult to use. They need the catapult to start and the parachute to land. And on top of that, none of the existing models can carry enough payload capacity to collect the precise data. And that's why we knew that the industry requires lightweight unmanned aerial system to deliver solutions with all three attributes. And that's why we created Fixar, a complete unmanned aerial system for business. It has vertical takeoff and landing. It operates even in geomagnetic anomalies. It doesn't have any complicated mechanisms. It covers long distance up to 60 kilometers and flies up to 60 minutes on one battery charge and it's fully autonomous. And when we say autonomous, we mean this. 
So these are the core assets we have, the patented aerodynamic design that is scalable to extend flight distance and payload capacity. We don't use any open source protocols. All our software is our uh, proprietary software like autopilot and system um, that brings the safety even for the beyond visual line of sight flights. We also have our proprietary ground control station where you create the mission, press the button start and drone starts implementing the mission on its own. It has automatic train track and it's uh, and full and uh, very intuitively simple interface. So due to the swappable payload module, our drones are absolutely industry agnostic. We can do at the same time the different missions, simply changing the sensor. For example, we, do, we did this amazing case aerial photography on Elbrus, the highest mountain in Europe, on 4,500 meters above sea level, where actually just a few professional helicopters can work. Uh, the first responders and search and rescue teams like working with us because it takes them less than two minutes to set the drone up and send it for the mission to identify the hot spots or to find the people under the snow. We have extensive experience in bioprotection and um, precision agriculture. Uh, we are also uh, a perfect uh, solution for the last mile delivery, even of the temperature sensitive biomaterials like blood, blood products, vaccines or medications. Actually, we launched our sales only seven months ago and so far our total revenue is $325,000. So all the uh, technological advantages that I already mentioned, at the end of the day, they bring the economic efficiency and that's what matters. So simply comparing Frixar with average copter and average plane, we see that the cost of aerial mapping or the monitoring of long range assets like oil and gas pipelines, power lines, et cetera, or last, or last mile delivery are up to 10 times more efficient than if they're done by average copter or average plane. So speaking about our, our traction is uh, we are fully developed and manufactured in EU, we in Riga, Latvia. Uh, we have very strong IP portfolio. We have patents on aerodynamic design and payload module. All our, uh, all our software, proprietary software are certified. So far we collected $2.6 million. And over the last year, we've grown our distributors network from zero to 25 all over the globe. We have certification in Canada and the United States. We're certified as the visual line of sight drone. We are completing our application in EU as well. And recently we signed the agreement with a strategic partner in Canada, the largest drone operator, Valatos. So they are setting up the license manufacturing of Fixar 007 here in Ontario uh, with the uh, capacity, production capacity of 1,200 units per year. So our business model is very straightforward. We do develop the dealership network uh, with 75% uh, gross margin, and that's how we do sales. Over the last year, we've collected LOI's total over $5 million from the different companies, including the drone operator in, in uh, Japan uh, that serves the McDonald's needs for the last mile delivery. We have an awesome uh, team of uh, 24 professionals in total. We have all the skill sets in place, sales, marketing, uh, development, developers, our founder is European champion of the drone combat games and aviation engineer. Uh, we have a fantastic team of our advisors who help us to open the doors into new niches. And we're looking now for a serious round. And I'm almost, yeah, five minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> So Nelly, should I uh, thank you. close the Thank you very much. Now? It was really in time and it was uh, very, uh, very energetic. <laughs> yes. So uh, any questions to fix are from investors? Okay, I have a question. Um, sure. Julia, could you uh, tell us a bit more about you know the, the, the market size you see for the uh, for this solution and where do you think uh, this is going to be uh, first introduction I mean, in terms of uh, where do you see that advancing faster in this moment? Uh, you mean the niches or the geographical geographical geographically and, and type of niche as well yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's very simple. So I just had the slide, but uh, to make the long story short, it's um, it, it's mostly we're focusing now on the uh, top, uh, like more mature markets. That's the North America, Canada, and the United States, and the European Union. At the same time, we already did the uh, first supply to Africa, to Mozambique, and the United Nations are very interested in working with Frixar. They're now doing the demonstrations. We have the huge interest from uh, India. 
um, Australia, New Zealand, and Japan. So, but mostly we can't be effect effective at the same time everywhere. So we prioritized uh, North America first and European Union, and then we are moving based on the traction. For example, we have huge interest from Africa and we do looking for, for, for the opportunities over there. India the same, Japan is the same. And the beauty of the technology is that, first of all, like I said, it's scalable. So we can, and uh, since we don't use any open source protocols, any frequency challenges are not an issue for us. We already mm -hmm. know the frequency requirements in the United States, in Japan, in Israel, in other countries, and they're all absolutely compatible with us. And the size of the market, what, what do you think is going to be overall? Are yeah, absolutely. Able to give on Sure. So the to total addressable market, if we look just uh, on the um, like on the top level, is, to is twenty two billion uh, in uh, in twenty in twenty twenty last year. So our top target market is on is if we only speak about North America and uh, European Union is just nine uh, nine billions. Uh, so it's uh, just five uh, fifty five percent uh, of the global market. And do you have any major competitor? And then I'm, I'm not going to ask other questions. Yeah, well, uh, again, if, if, if just compare like things that just fly, there's a lot of drones. If, if, you, if you go deeper and start comparing, we have all the tables in place and simply comparing the performance characteristics and payload capacity, um, uh, flight time, um, operating time, etc. is just really a few of them. So, and I, I can just, for example, a lot of people come to me and say, hey, how do you compete with DJI? The answer is very simple. We do not compete with DJI. DJI can't process the uh, industrial applications and the rest of the models who work in this industry, they have significant um, downsides. And that's why Pixar uh, stands out, stand out uh, among them. Okay, great. I guess uh, Luca is more or less fine with the questions. And we'll thank you. No, no, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Sorry. ladies. Sorry. Right. For the okay. Uh, and speaking about industrial, uh, I see Pablo. Yeah. And you, Pablo, your questions. Hi. Sure. Hi, Julia. Um, just a quick question. So, do you sell the drone, so the product to the end customer or the drone operator? We prefer to work with the dealers because we're uh, relatively small now and we do not work, uh, we do not prefer working with the end customers. We do prefer to have the uh, operator dealer uh, in the region who can also provide the maintenance support, technical support. So we train the uh, dealers properly so that they not only just uh, sell them, but, all, but all also provide the training, um, see how it works and provide the technical support. That's how we work through the dealership network. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, from the industrial side, uh, Halil or Xavier, do you have any questions? Halil, no. No, no, I don't. Thank you. Okay, got ya. Julia, thank you very much. And uh, I hope you will continue discussing it uh, in private. Thanks a lot for your pitch. And I thank want you, to give, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, I want to give the word to another startup from Spain, B Chained, and uh, the CEO, Stefano Melchor. Stefano? Hi. Uh, let me share my screen. Sure. Uh, just a second. Can you see it? Yes, if you can make it bigger. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Hello. My name is Stefano, I'm the CEO of Bichain. Bichain exists to make the energy transition happen in five years, not in 50. To cope with it, we play a crucial role in the energy sector. We outbalance the supply and the demand of electricity, reduce the, gar the uh, greenhouse gases emissions and help the grid balance. Traditionally, the peak and the throttle of demand were balanced by large coal and gas power plants. We used to turn it up when we consume more electricity down when we consume less electricity. This was inherently an inefficient and polluting system that won't exist anymore. In Europe, businesses have 20% of capacity not optimized that represented 20 billion in the services and industrial sector. Awareness is growing that the excess of capacity can be used to compensate 
unexpected peak from the bottom line. Excess of capacity in Europe is typically brought and sold by energy traders in the balanced market. So the opportunity is there. Solar and wind will replace the fossil fuel power plants and the consumption from demand will compensate these peak moments. To speed up the energy transition, we need a new way to keep in balance supply with demand. And Bchain has a solution for that problem. Bchain acquired the right to control the electricity consumption within certain parameters from our clients. For example, we acquired the right to control a furnace at a steel manufacturer or an air conditioning system in an hotel or in a building from our customers. That allow us to turn up or down the furnace temperature so that the temperature is kept within certain limit in the production process. Then we take this flexibility and provide it to the electricity market, producing revenue for our customer and speed up the replacement of these fossil fuel plants. What would differentiate us for our customer for our, uh, is our software plant. It connects electricity consuming with the energy market. Our software platform uses artificial intelligence algorithm built around the patented method to optimize the behavior of each individual plant and appliance. Our clients have access to insight of the energy consumption, control and curtail what the appliance can do so they can now make strategic decisions. Our business model is energy as a service. We make money through subscription fee and from revenue from sold flexibility in the market. We work with business consumers like steel manufacturer, hotels, hospitals, and with energy traders. We acquire customers to, through B2B direct sales activities. Our solution all of our uh, customers to manage in real time their actual consumption with minimal effort. Without disruption, the existing process, as our competitor sometimes do. We then offer them the opportunity to monetize the flexibility in the market, to help the grid balance and reduce the carbon footprint. We are a team of three who previously purchased energy in multinational company or build technology to fix the grid issue. We project that we can reach 10 million euros by 2024, having already secured our first 90,000 euros contract. Expecting a second one by June, we got two letters of interest and started to deal with the utility in Andorra. We need to expand traction and team. That is why we are raising a pre-seed 500,000 euros found over a, three, a 2 million evaluation. So it used to be that the businesses had no control over their cost, no opportunity to play a role in the energy market. But now they open up to these businesses. And that means that they will start monetizing their participation and uh, in the market, reducing the cost and the carbon footprint. B-chain make it easy and seamless, paving the way for a business to get value out of their responsible consumption. If you want to invest in a greener, more sustainable and equitable energy system, who do you call? Call B-chain. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stefano. Very charismatic. Thanks a lot. So the favorite part is the questions from the investor side. Who has questions? I, I have a question. Um, I'll need to know uh, in terms of billing, um, do you have, do you already have revenues or how are you in, in, yes. in the point of billing? Yes, we, we signed in the, in the beginning of the year a 19,000 euros contract. So along the year, we, we are going to uh, invoice uh, with a total of 19,000. As I said before, 
In June, we expect to sign another second contract with 80, uh, of about 80,000 uh, euros. Uh, I have to, 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 to I, I started a deal with the utility in Andorra and this contract is going to, uh, we are going to invoice, I think, we, sorry, we are going to sign it, I think before the end of June, because uh, we, we started already to, to to discuss technical uh, technical details. So our projection is that we can reach half a million of revenue, hopefully by the end of the year. Okay. So thank thank you thank you very much. Good. You're welcome. Um, any other questions from investors? Yes, uh, sorry, Stefano. Hi, thanks for the for the pitch. So, what is the the expansion plan? So, are you gonna focus first in Spain or let or me the markets that you're addressing? To, uh, I don't have. The, sorry, I don't have that slide. Well, uh, actually, uh, our intention is to uh, start in Spain because we are based in Spain. But since the grid, the electric grid uh, between Spain and Portugal is shared. Uh, the next natural uh, market will be Portugal. Uh, January the 27th is open up the balanced market in Spain. Hopefully by the end of uh, uh, the year or the beginning of next year in Portugal as well. We have a, 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 a patented method. The patent is registered in Europe, Switzerland, UK, Russia, and USA. This means that our these are our, let me say, target market. Um, in our roadmap, we expect to, uh, to issue another uh, seed round by the end of 2023, because we want first to accelerate in the Iberian market, and then to expand uh, seamlessly in other markets in Europe. So we are going to uh, expect this seed round to uh, help us be stronger in an in, in internationalization. By the way, the strongest or more interesting market right now uh, in Europe are uh, UK, France, and let me say Benelux, in the sense that Netherlands and, and Belgium, because these markets are a bit more advanced. But the southern uh, country as well, they are going to speed up uh, the opening and uh, uh, and also the, the, they are interested as well for us. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Stefano. And um, we will move forward. Um, I want to give a word to another startup from Italy, this time another great market, EcoSteer company and uh, Giada Zanata will present it. Giada, are you ready? Yes, thank you. Uh, let me, okay. Good evening, uh, I'm Jada from Ecosteer, an IoT and blockchain startup for data ownership and monetization. And our objective is to lay the technical foundation for a new decentralized and distributed data economy. Today, uh, okay. Today, uh, real-time nominal consumer data is the new oil. And uh, there are several researches and real examples that show how our personal data coming from our uh, personal smart devices uh, have as a huge economic value. However, privacy laws limit data monetization opportunities. And the reason is of a technical nature. All the current IT data sharing infrastructure are centralized as they have exclusive control over third party access to consumers data. Let's take a current example. Today, drivers are the legal data owners, but they cannot control third party access to their data. And on the other companies such as car manufacturers cannot monetize driver's data and still be in compliance with privacy laws. EcoSteer turned privacy laws from an obstacle into an opportunity. Our data ownership platform adds a layer of data access control decentralization on top of any existing IT data sharing infrastructure, making it GDPR compliant by design. In fact, 
thanks to end-to-end -end encryption and blockchain smart contract, our technology gives data owners exclusive control over any third-party access to their data. And this video shows how our technology changed the current paradigm. Today, any data brokering platform has exclusive control over third-party access to consumers' data. With our technology, data is encrypted at its source. It flows through the data broker, still encrypted, and it reaches the final point of usage, encrypted. It will be decrypted only with the explicit consent of the data owner. Consent that is given through a blockchain smart contract that also set the value of data in tokens. In fact, only by ensuring ownership, ensuring to consumers ownership over their data, they can monetize it in a straightforward manner. And uh, this technology lends itself to be using corporate data stream marketplaces, where companies such as Alperia, an Italia energy company and our first client can invite selected business partners to access and use consumers' data in full compliance with the GDPR while providing a new rewarding user experience. In fact, consumers can personally grant and revoke the consent to use their data to chosen stakeholders at any time, and they can be compensated in tokens for data sharing, tokens that will be used to buy services on the marketplace. This technology allows companies to become data companies, having a new revenue stream from the marketplace management while enhancing customer trust and loyalty. And all of that without legal liability and costs that today are related to existing data sharing platform. We offer our technology with a software license based on number of connected devices. So we enable our client to create their own data stream marketplaces. We target now energy and mobility sector as they have already invested a lot in IoT devices. However, our technology is an horizontal technology for any industry, any IoT device and any business partners. In fact, our ambitious vision is to have the data ownership platform installed on any device on the planet, making our patented multicast and end encryption scheme the universal means to execute data access control. This is our team, it's still a small team, but with the right mix of competencies, enable us to raise 800K from private and public funds to fully develop and validate our product and to obtain two US patent granted. In particular, the patent on this technology on our, on our data ownership platform has been granted in only two months. And as mentioned, we have a first client and we partner with system integrators such as PwC, NTT, and HP. We are now seeking 700K to uh, close the first entire uh, client project cycle and obtain a further investment to start the scale-up. I want to say that our technology is completely aligned with European data strategy and all the European data directives. Thank you for your attention and let's build a new decentralized and distributed data economy together. Thank you and very happy to take your questions. Thank you, Giada. And uh, just to clarify, are you raising on equity uh, conditions or it is a kind of token sale? Equity. Mm -hmm. Equity okay. condition, uh, yes, because um, Yes, we uh, do not want to go through an ICO at this stage. Okay, so questions from investors? Well, maybe, Zada, my first question, thank you again for the presentation, um, is uh, so what type of blockchain uh, base you're using? Is it your own proprietary one or do you have a, you know, an existing uh, blockchain? Um, Actually, uh, no, the first implementation of the data ownership platform uh, used Ethereum because in 2018, when we started to develop the data ownership platform, Ethereum was the most advanced blockchain in terms of traction. However, we are blockchain agnostic because we develop an abstraction layer that enable our client to choose the blockchain they accommodate uh, better their, their needs. And today uh, we are integrating Algorand also 
as a blockchain uh, because as a matter of fact of fact uh, um, the what we uh, what is needed is a stateful smart contract then of course as said our client uh, uh, can choose the blockchain they prefer um, yes and we use blockchain uh, as you can understand only for the smart contract not for the ledger to transport neither to store any data yeah thank you thank you no more questions luca no i'm okay mm -hmm. hi Jada. Mm -hmm. yeah I, have a question. <clears throat> I was asking uh, do you find a use case in india as well or will it be restricted to eu uh uh we are open uh, to to of course uh, so we are not focused only to, to the EU. Of course, right now we are, because of the limited resources we have, we are targeting Italy first, and then uh, we are starting some connection in Germany and Austria as of course, neighbor countries. Sure, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Giada. I think we can continue questions in private mode and we can uh, uh, jump to another startup. So I want to give a word uh, to the startup from the UK, uh, the company Carnot, and uh, we have two people, CEO Archie Watts Farmer and business development director Francis Lamp. So who of you guys will be presenting? Both of us. You will. Okay, perfect. So please, microphone is yours. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Archie Woods Farmer, the CEO. I'm Francis Lemp, I lead the equity raising and business development. And with our co-founder, Nadir Rahman, we founded Carno. So in 1824, Monsieur Carno worked out that the maximum efficiency an engine can achieve is around about 85%. Fast forward 200 years and the average efficiency engines are achieving is about 35%. We'd like to introduce you to our technology that brings this up to a game changing 70%. There are currently no production ready alternatives to engines for large and long range applications such as off-grid energy, trucks and ships. So we have invented an engine that goes further, cleaner, and smarter, and by operating on hydrogen and biofuels can revolutionize some of the most challenging industries to decarbonize. So what is the key issue with modern engines and why are they so inefficient? Well, a modern engine will waste on average one third of fuel to cooling systems that stop metallic components from melting. We're developing engines with key components manufactured from ceramics, able to withstand fuel combustion temperatures eliminating the need for cooling systems and doubling efficiencies. The global transition to net zero means we need to radically rethink the way we generate, use and store energy. The markets we're targeting are prime off-grid power and long-term energy storage, shipping and finally heavy duty trucks. These markets are facing an unprecedented need to innovate and are looking to startups to meet this need. By combining clean Carnot engines with batteries, we can enable battery technology for these large and long haul applications for which batteries alone and fuel cells would otherwise be unsuitable due to cost, weight and size limitations. With double efficiency, Carnot engines will halve fuel costs and reduce the total cost of ownership by 35%. The payback period for the high unit cost will be within 10% of the product's life. Crucially, our vision is to drive our target markets to net zero emissions through mass adoption of our clean engines. In order to facilitate this transition, our engines will also be able to operate on hydrocarbons, halving emissions along the way. Transitioning to net zero will be achieved by simply swapping out the fuel delivery system to run on hydrogen and biofuels. So my background is 10 years in the aerospace sector. Francis is our quantum physicist and Nadir is our designer extraordinaire. Since launching, 
we've been awarded a £300,000 Innovate UK grant and a further £300,000 Eureka Eurostars grant. We won a place on the TechX Accelerator, run in partnership with BP and Equinor. We filed a patent containing seven key enabling inventions. We formed key strategic relationships, including with Fraunhofer, the world's largest research institute on technical ceramics. And we've developed an energy access solution for a rural community in Ethiopia, working with the Ethiopian Institute of Technology. We've identified off-grid energy in sub-Saharan Africa and marine vessel auxiliary power units as our beachhead markets. And we've also assembled a world-class advisory board, which includes Ed Wood, the former chief design engineer at Williams Formula One, and Duncan Dunbar, the chief designer of Mercedes Formula One powertrains. So Cardo has a five-year, three-phase exit strategy. And we're currently approaching our first key milestone to run a prototype in August of this year. To access our target markets, we will form development partnerships with industrial players to whom we will license our IP. Carnot will develop the core technology while partners will handle manufacturing, sales and distribution. We're now seeking a total funding amount of five million pounds in order to begin our second phase of development by expanding our engineering team filing international PCT patents and beginning pilot scale trials. We're looking for investors that can help refine our business strategy, launch Kano into the market, and at crucially share our vision to move further, cleaner and smarter. Our momentum is building and we'd be delighted for you to join us on our journey to move further, cleaner and smarter. We really appreciate your time and the opportunity to present please feel free to ask any questions you may have. Thank you. Wow, thank you very much. You're first perfectly in time. And second, during I think one year and a half, it is the first time where it was such a syn synchronized uh, uh, pitch of uh, two people uh, in parallel. Amazing, guys, thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. So questions? From investor, look, I, I see already unmuted him. Yeah, I, I you know I I'm, I love automotive. I, I spent a lot of time in it. But um, no, I actually wanted to ask you. Um, uh, this is of course you know for long haul and and trucks and stuff like that, right? And and also you know the other application you mentioned. Um, do you have a sense of what it could be the commercial price of this type of engine? I mean, are, are you talking about because you know? With the you know thirty five percent total cost of ownership, etc. Reduction, the ten percent return, I just couldn't get to you know more or less are we aligned with the market, or is it going to be a lot more expensive given the ceramic materials and uh, all the other innovation? Sure. So the we 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 predict that the um, unit cost will be fifty percent higher than the um, the 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 average um, uh, combustion engine, um, but. If we take a generator, for instance, um, the that that will be paid back within under a year, um, mm -hmm. so less than ten percent of the the, the lifetime. Um, yeah. Because fuel, yeah, as you probably know, fuel is it's typically eighty percent of the total cost of ownership of, of generators. Yeah. no, that makes sense. Makes sense. And and do you have a, a already started conversation with any of the uh, you know OEMs or or, or energy producers or? So yes. we've 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 um, we've been in conversations with the OEMs. At, at the moment, we're actually focusing on um, the uh, the um, end users. So we're looking at um, people who can provide test platforms, pilot scale trials, that type of thing. So we just finished a conversation with a, a marine vessel operator um, today, who's willing to to trial our technology. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, we want to spend the next two years and the, the money we raise with our um, with the next round, um, making our our intellectual property watertight, um, developing the technology and, and trialing it, um, so that by the end we can have a license agreement in place with the um, with an OEM. Got it. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions to the team? 
Okay, probably we'll leave it for private. Thank you very much, Archie and Francis, and uh, uh, we will come back to you when we get the feedback after the session. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And I want to give the word uh, to the startup from Canada. Um, well, there is a confusion. It is written in my notes that the startup name is Arteran Renewables, but I see that on in mind it is called Velocity. So maybe the founder can explain better. Um, VP, sorry, VP of Business Development, David Thyssen. David, are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can explain that. We are a clean tech company and we're embedding our clean tech into fintech. And that's what I'd uh, like to tell you about today. So oh, thank you for the information stage. Okay, okay. So microphone is yours, please go. Thank you for your time, everyone. I have two platforms to let you know about our commercializing clean tech platform and our digital and our digital supply chain platform that will help investors to hedge inflation, earn a yield by fractionally financing the renewable production projects of the industry that builds upon our clean tech clean tech platform. Four types of participants will onboard the digital platform, impact investors, plant manufacturing partners, the producers who will make and deliver the lower cost bio coal, and of course, the coal fire generators seeking to renewably face from coal. And this will all occur on Lab 577's Dazzle platform built on Corda, which we will white label license. Next steps requires a 70 day coding of the automated market maker, and this mechanism will allow liquidity providers to earn a yield hedged in a unit of energy backed by the producer's production pool. The producers stake their forward production onto the digital platform, will ne negotiate 10 to 15 year contracts with each of them, which is standard for our industry. This makes us the bio coal trade in partner and allows us to discount forward revenues, offering a commodity hedge hedge and a yield farming opportunity to liquidity providers. This type of financing is known as whole business securitization. And via this model, we will finance and trade the whole industry that builds upon our clean tech platform. And by doing so, we will scale the industry so much faster. For example, digital platforms, I think uh, reach at Uber scale in four years, your typical, um, uh, Fortune 500 does this in 20 years. So um, and that's basically the benefit of this. And if I sort of go on, I guess, uh, coal is a massive industry. It's 5.1 billion tons of coal. If if we were to replace just 5% of that coal market, we would have to build a new production plant every day for eight and a half years. There's no way our company, even as I, I believe we are the number one solution to climate change, seeing that coal is the number one problem to, to, to coal. But yeah, it's gonna take the world to adopt our technology to build, these, to build these plants and these pellets basically to replace coal. And let's see. Um, in short, liquidity providers will be able to swap out of a devaluing currency into a digital unit of energy. This pooled capital finances projects and the production of buyer coal and the whole trade settles when the coal fire generators buy the digital commodity to secure the physical production rights. Initial price discovery is provided by Argus Biomass who reports the assessed value of pellet trade from global markets and namely of our competitor, the industrial wood pellet. The wood pellet is the only renewable fuel today competitive to replace thermal coal. So coal guys have only one option and that's the wood pellet. And now after eight years of R&D, we're about to introduce a superior, a more competitive biocoal product into the market, offering significant logistical savings. And what this chart shows here is if we'd replaced all of the pellets uh, delivered, exported in 2017, uh, it took 523 HandyMax uh, ships to deliver the wood pellet, we would be able to do it in just 311 ships. And that's because we have more energy, energy density per ton and more mass density per, uh, per ton as well. So we can get more energy in a, in a cube, basically. You can look at it that way on a train or a truck. 
What Mother Nature does over millions of years, turning biomass into coal, our process does in less than 90 minutes and sustainably. As a drop in bio coal, we will eliminate the upfront expense required to convert to wood pellets, which is about $400 million for your average coal fired plant. And it will wipe out the expensive, expensive silos to store pellets from, uh, to, from moisture and also the special trains, as you can see, drafts built here. David, uh, timing uh, is uh, over right now. Maybe a few seconds to summarize. Uh, uh, sure, yeah. basically. So what you see here is what everyone's doing. The difference uh, about our technology is everyone has, that's making a solid biofuel has to do the same thing, get rid of the moisture. And what everyone else does is they hit it with a ton of energy to dry out the biomass. What we've done is in the complete opposite of that. We use a, a food grade catalyst that we've invented ourselves and this uh, breaks down the molecular uh, binding agents that make the, the moisture attached to biomass. So this is a huge upfront energy savings. And this is what makes us able to make a better pellet for the same price as the, as the wood pellet today. And I was about to show you here, we've already been a third party lab uh, um, validated by, by all those labs there. And Paulo right now, as you see here, he's actually completely duplicated our technology, made our solid biofuel. And as we speak, he's actually testing uh, biomass sent from Malaysia and, and uh, also from India to validate our, those biomasses in our process. We have a demonstration plant on, on deck right now in Fort St. John. Uh, BDC Bank is willing to provide us some of the financing. Uh, we're co-locating at a pellet plant and they're providing us uh, in-kind support. Uh, so now we're looking for uh, some investors, hopefully you guys, that are going to help us uh, expedite uh, uh, coal replacement solution around the world. And this is some of the traction that we've got in the countries that are now basically waiting for us to do our demonstration plant, which will basically birth a new industry uh, to replace thermal coal. Okay. Thank I'll be happy to answer any questions and sorry for the extra time. Thank you, David. And uh, yeah, let's uh, switch to questions from investor side. Oh, Mangalam, I guess you could have... Oh, Pablo, Pablo, please go. Uh, hi, David. So how much are you looking to raise right now? So we're ideally uh, 3 million bucks. It's $2 million for our demonstration plant uh, for the CapEx of it. Although we do have some bank financing in there. Uh, and then for the lab, uh, Dazzle platform that I mentioned, that's a licensing of uh, 430,000 uh, a year. Although uh, it is licensing and it's paid quarterly. So we could probably get them going on that last little coding of the automated market maker, uh, probably with about $200,000. And we could really bootstrap this whole process instead of getting that whole $2 million to build the whole demonstration plant. We need a few hundred thousand dollars to actually move the, to, to get to the next stage, which is have uh, this engineering company actually uh, do uh, figure out uh, our last stage of our engineering. So I think with that engineering uh, component done first and the platform, we'd then be ready to sort of move on to the next, uh, next race. But uh, otherwise, ideally, three million bucks. Okay. And uh, debt, equity, Convertible notes could be tokens. Um, we're we're open. Money's money. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Pablo. Uh, Mangalam, do you have any questions considering the traction in India? No, I think I had one on fundraise, which I think you already cleared. So. Okay, perfect. So thank you very much, David. I think you can continue answering the questions in private mode uh, after the event. And um, yeah, we can, we can move forward. The last but not least for today, the startup from Switzerland, uh, Skypool, and uh, the CTO, Aldo Catano. Aldo, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Great. So you can start sharing your screen. Yeah, can you see it? Yeah, uh, can you make it bigger? Perfect, perfect. Okay, yeah. Okay. 
your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for everybody. So I'm Aldo Catano, CEO of Skypo. Uh, what we provide is energy from drones and altitude winds. Now, our mission is accelerating energy transition to renewables. And the ambition is uh, that we don't want you know, to uh, move uh, higher than two, centi temper two centigrade uh, of uh, in, uh, temperature on the world. So where we are now here is on the left. And where we need to go is uh, increase, improve 80% of renewable energy in some years. Now, how we to achieve the, this ambition goal? is by tapping into a resource, strong and consistent winds at 200 meters altitude and above. Now, and that to do that, we have to bring to the market a drone capable to convert high altitude wind forces into low cost electricity in almost any location around the world. Now, as you see from these two slides, on the left, you can see the wind speed at 100 meters altitude and on the right at 500 meters altitude. So the energy you can uh, exploit from the wind is going with the cube of the wind speed. So if you increase uh, a bit the wind, you are really a bit increasing energy exploiting. That's the reason why we want to go higher there and not as a standard wind turbine that has to work at 100 meters altitude. Now, <clears throat> the optimal solution as we have is a, a drone uh, then a, a cable, the drone that is making maximum uh, lift, so maximum traction, uh, thanks to the wind, like a kite. Then there is a cable that is transmitting this uh, traction and the ground station that is converting this traction in energy on the downside. Now, the value proposition towards traditional wind turbines is that we have a, a lower cost of electricity uh, of 50%, greater power production of 100% because there is much more wind up there. Why the polyability? Why? Because we are much smaller, easier logistics for the same reason, and low, less components. So 90% less weight of components towards a standard wind turbine of the same power production. So resulting in a substantial lower CO2 emission per megawatt hour produced. So that's the reason why we reach uh, uh, and a COE of $30 per megawatt hour that is lower than standard fossil fuels. We have intellectual uh, different uh, patents, so we have a family of uh, free patents that we uh, use. You, we decide to patent in uh, the 68% of energy market, where we have also India. And uh, now the market opportunity is that we, at, we have different uh, products that we are going products that we are going to develop. Uh, the 100 kilowatt, it is the SP600, will be useful in uh, island electrification, science and defense, disaster relief, agricultural, and mining. Now, the market forecast for our uh, 100 kilowatt machine, that is SP600, is that at the end, we will have a little part of the new uh, gen set uh, in the world, but for us, it will be already a huge market. And if we look at uh, the uh, megawatt system, also there, we are only looking to a really small fraction, but for us will be really a really big uh, business plan and re re a lot of money for our company. Now, <clears throat> the commercialization market strategy is that where our first system will be a 25 kilowatt machine, and we have already uh, pilot partners that are utility in Switzerland and also some big uh, companies. As soon as we reach the 100 kilowatt machine, the SP600, there is a Vestas that is the biggest company in the world for wind turbines that is interested to buy the signed uh, LOI to buy two of our system and uh, interest also in by Enel. Then the, we will have a commercial product and then uh, scale up uh, to utility scale. Now, investment proposal, at the moment, uh, uh, we are raising, we are currently raising 1.1 million and we have already secured 400K for a total of 1.5 million. In the past, we already secured 660K for equity and uh, in grants and prices, 1.2 million. Now, uh, these are all our acknowledgements. Uh, we were incubated by European Space Agency, uh, we were, uh, and we are still uh, uh, funded by the uh, Swiss uh, Federal Office of Energy. And, uh, and then uh, we, we were uh, on the media of BBC 
and a lot of uh, Swiss uh, newspapers and TVs. Okay, thanks. And that's it on my side. Hope that I say it in the five minutes. Open Thank you, Aldo. It was a uh, impressive, great presentation. Thank you. So questions to Aldo. I guess uh, Luca will want to ask because he's also from Switzerland. <laughs> Of course, I want to ask. No, thank you, Aldo, for the presentation. Uh, the, the first question I have is: is, um, is there any interference with these cables moving uh, 200 meter um, with anything else? I mean, from low flights, uh, drones to whatever else, um, but even with other cables. Correct. Uh, thank you for a question. So now uh, we have uh, a permit to fly whenever we like uh, uh, near Lugano. So we are always working with the uh, Civil Aviation Authority of Switzerland. We already went one time to the European uh, agency. And so we are, uh, we know if uh, another drone is coming, a helicopter is coming, a plane is coming because we are using a different uh, type of uh, uh, electronic device like uh, transponder, flarm, and we are now moving to use uh, uh, for low flying, uh, moving flight object like paraglides that perhaps has not these electronic devices on board. We're going to use a uh, uh, detector via um, webcam so that in this case also we, we can uh, 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 know actively who is coming there. As soon as we are getting bigger and we will have wind farm, we will have also radar. And then in this case, uh, uh, yeah, we will really scan all the, uh, the space uh, near us. Thank you. And, and so my question, second question was actually exactly in the direction. So, you, so how many of these objects you need to have, um, you know, together to produce enough energy, I don't know, for a city or for a... Yeah, okay. Uh, so what I want to say, uh, I don't know if you see the uh, slide, that uh, we are going to use uh, less, uh, uh, so we are going to produce more energy from the same space compared to a wind turbine farm or to a uh, photovoltaic panels. Why? Yeah. Because the wind farm, uh, the wind turbine is always at the same height. So that one turbine is making turbulence to the uh, turbine that is after. In our case, our system, are, one is going down, one is going up. So we can really make everything more compact. And that's the reason why, uh, for sure, as soon as we are in the UD scale, uh, we can think about uh, giving much more energy towards our system. Uh, now, the, the example of, of a village or of a town is, is uh, not so simple to make, but okay. I need, uh, yeah. So maybe we can talk about it separately. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good to see that there is already some uh, traction starting. And uh, I also uh, received uh, the feedback uh, from another founder uh, who wants to connect with you, Aldo, for potential collaborations. Fantastic. Great. Uh, we will do intro after the session. Any other questions from investors? Yes, uh, just one question. So do you move the drones looking for better winds? Sorry, I did not understand very well. So do you move the drones looking for better winds, like stronger winds, I mean? Uh, look, uh, uh, wind turbine is always... Uh, so yes, uh, as soon as you go higher, there is much more wind. So the wind is always uh, higher as far as you go from the ground. So that's the reason why instead the standard turbine has to uh, work only at 100 meters because uh, the tower cannot be higher than that. In our case, we can really go uh, much higher and do, so getting much stronger wind, more constant, and that's really uh, good for power production. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Xavier, do you have any questions? Yeah, I wanted to ask um, about, you told us how much you are looking for in terms of money, but uh, in what economic valuation are you currently looking at for the, this money? Yeah, at the moment, so we had the first valuation that uh, uh, was uh, pre-money uh, to 3 million. And now after one year of working and uh, getting all, with all the, the targets, uh, uh, we, we decide to, uh, now we have an evaluation of 8 millions. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good. 
So I think that uh, you can continue, Alda, talking to investors privately after this session. Thanks a lot for your presentation. It was really good. Thank you to you. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, before we finish today, because we are really very good in timing, I think best of any other session, uh, I want to ask one question to investor or, or, or ask for a favor. Uh, can you please give an advice for startup founders participating here today? Because uh, the session topic is quite specific, clean tech, energy tech and agri tech and a majority of projects as we have seen today uh, have hardware element which uh, makes uh, their strategy uh, a lot different from typical software startups. So could you please uh, give some advice on what is the most important for you when you consider uh, projects like these to invest in? Uh, what should they elaborate on mostly in the pitch deck? Luca, I see you want to start. That's great. Thank you. Oh, I feel like I'm, no, no, it's, a, it's a, yeah, look, I think, for me, what is really important is to see that there has been a pilot line or something that is that has been used in terms of you know prototyping uh, that that has allowed the team to uh, let me say test and optimize the solution from another perspective, and uh, of course even better if there is behind it uh, some uh, um, let me say target. Uh, uh, either customer or or partner that can actually um, you know, support them in doing this because, of course, it's very difficult. You know, I think the Fraunhofer Institute was mentioned before, but many other, if it's not, an, I know, like a lab like that, it can be like a, a, a major customer. Uh, the other thing I would say is, of course, if there are any uh, revenues, uh, that, of course, is, is, is to some extent the, the guarantee that at least uh, someone thinks that there is a value in the solution. So that's also the reason why, as a fund, we typically invest uh, uh, in Series A and B because we don't want to make sure that uh, we see the technology, the risking has already happened uh, before. I mean, we wouldn't be able to test uh, every single technology ourselves, right? So that's the, the the viewpoint that we take. Okay, good. Uh, so elaborating more on traction on pilots with uh, commercial customers and uh, of course partnerships with industrial players. Correct. Good. Yes, uh, correct. And if it's helpful, I, you know, after uh, if uh, others have speak, spoken, I can even give you an example of a company that has done that very well. Oh, really? Oh, don't hesitate. Tell us. <laughs> okay. Well, in a company that we invested in is called Pulpex. is a uh, is a manufacturer of the first hundred percent paper bottle that uh, exists in the world. They have um, so they have they are an R and D. Um, you know, licensing type of uh, company, but they have been able to uh, uh, collaborate at the beginning with Yageo, which is the largest player in the world for spirit, right? They own Johnny Walker and, and many other. Um, and then based on that partnership, they uh, signed up uh, PepsiCo for non-spirits or soft drinks, so Unilever for non-food, Gasso Smith Klein for pharma, uh, Castro for, for, for motor oil. And as a result of that, they basically have selected for each of the verticals and segment they want to serve a uh, key uh, account. And uh, and now they even uh, sign up a company called Storaeso, which is the largest player in the world for, for paper, right? So they, they basically went from, you know, having a pilot line, which is what they have uh, uh, even today, right? To be able to finance their second round, which is the one we did uh, with them uh, with, uh, um, basically uh, to, to be able to do a, a nice speed line that then will be the demonstrator for everybody else. And they were already launching a market with Johnny Walker this year, um, the, the, the product itself. Okay, okay, perfect. I think that's uh, quite Thank interesting you, example. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Luca. And yeah. Xavier, I wanted also to ask the same question to you because uh, telephonic experience is quite interesting here. And uh, if you could share some. Yeah, well, um, yeah, uh, due to our investment thesis, uh, for me, the most uh, important thing is that they have uh, some traction when they contact us, uh, some incomes and those. And, and it always helps to see uh, that there are other uh, interested VCs. Since Waira does not act as a lead investor, we always go 
with with other PCs. And another thing that um, that I look at uh, a lot is the team uh, that they are good and highly motivated. Um, that's what I that I what look what what I look most and in the. So the factor, the motivated feel of team from the pitch. Again, again, sorry. How do you understand this third factor, the motiv a highly motivated team uh, from the pitch? <laughs> well, um, for me, uh, is is the the feeling when I talk to them. Um, uh, you must have a good feeling, and today I had it with with some of them. So, so. I like the presentations of today. Oh, amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. I will contact you, Javier, very soon to ask uh, who of uh, the founders you want uh, to uh, ask to introduce you to. That's amazing. Perfect. Um, well, in Waira, we have uh, other hubs uh, around the world. So maybe some of them uh, are not for me because, for example, we have a, a hub at the UK. So they are the ones who who has to to deal with with the UK. Oh, it, it depends on on the place where you are located. Uh, the hub what which you are going to to talk with. Mm -hmm. So if the company the startup is from UK, uh, even if you like them. What? You can't continue yourself. Uh, uh, mm, well, they can contact me, and then I can make an intro to the to the UK hub. And if they don't like them, I can take it. But but they have uh, well, they have uh, they have priority. I mean, yeah, being such a large corporate, you have this uh, structure. Yeah. Uh, you are responsible for all Europe, correct? In, except. No, no, no. Uh, Waira Barcelona, we are, well, we have a hub uh, here in Barcelona and one in Madrid, and we cover the Mediterranean area. Uh, Barcelona and Valencia are the main, the main places where, where there are good startups. Which means that Canada, Switzerland, Latvia, and Italy are most probably for other hubs uh, in Waira, right? Um, the, the, the point is that if we don't have a hub, in in for example in Canada we don't have a hub so we have if I am the first one uh, taking it I can take it. Okay. Uh, it's okay. a kind Thanks of a so race. Much. Yeah. Explaining that because uh, that is not obvious for outside people. Uh, how is it structured in Waira? Uh, thank you, Javier and uh, pa Pablo. Uh, the last but not least, can you please give your advice and uh, from your perspective, what is the most important? Uh, in the startups uh, from these uh, sectors? Yeah, sure. So this sector is, is quite complicated to, to enter into big clients. They're usually big utilities and the uh, go-to-market and the selling strategy, it's usually quite long. Uh, so what we look here at GoHub is usually having quite a lot of traction or at least secured clients because it, it demonstrates that the technology or the product uh, works. And so we tend to look to a number of clients and revenue in that sense. But obviously there's always a start and considering the, the technology through pilot programs, it's one of the, the best ways to start and, and it's, it's the correct path, I think. So traction, traction, traction and sales. You do not invest on pre-traction, pre-revenue stage. Uh, we do, but it's it's in our accelerator program in that sense. So we have the venture side of the business where we look for traction, and then the other side, it's just pure technology. Yeah. Okay, Pablo, thank you for elaborating. So you see, uh, I'm asking founders that uh, all, all three investors, they are different angles, different perspectives, different companies. But and uh, they have different elements. Uh, one elaborates a little bit more on the team spirit and motivation. Another one elaborates a little bit more on uh, uh, the partnership perspective. But all three uh, put the core element as traction and sales, 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 sales. So you should wake up with uh, thinking about sales and uh, go to sleep thinking about sales. And don't forget to elaborate more on sales part and on partnership part on your next pitches. But your pitches were great. 
And uh, that is how I want to summarize uh, this session. All the investors will receive uh, the links to your startup profiles on in mind uh, in a few minutes, literally, after we finish today. And uh, we will be pushing them for the feedback in order to facilitate your direct connection and uh, conversation for the deal. So thank you very much to everyone and uh, have a beautiful uh, rest uh, part of the day. Thank okay, you. Thank everyone. you. Thanks very thank much. You. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.